how hot will it get? And the answer to that depends exactly where you are. In fact, it's remarkable that it's going to be as hot as we're expecting, given that the weather patterns at the moment aren't particularly exceptional. This is what I call a fairly typical summertime changeable weather pattern for the UK. We've got low pressure moving through uh, the passage between Iceland and northern Scotland. That continues to be the case into the weekend. We've got weather fronts moving in, so those weather fronts bringing occasional bouts of wind and rain to the far northwest, but higher pressure to the south. So fairly climatological conditions during Friday, Saturday into Sunday for the UK. This kind of setup a few decades ago may not have produced the kinds of temperatures that we'll be talking about in just a moment for southern parts of the UK. And indeed, it won't be producing those kinds of temperatures widely. If I put on the temperature field here, you can see a significant northwest southeast contrast establishing itself as we go into the weekend. We've got these weather fronts, tightly packed isobars there, windy start for the northwest of Scotland on Saturday, temperatures closer to average. But on the south side of the jet stream, on the south side of this uh, wriggling weather front that crosses central parts of the UK during Saturday, once it brightens up, temperatures will begin to shoot up and that marks the start of what will be officially in some places a heat wave and as we go into Sunday you can see high pressure building from the south that's going to lead to day by day temperature rises across the south and southeast we've still got these weather systems coming along from the Atlantic and this one in particular is just going to push some stronger winds once again and some outbreaks of rain into the north and west of Scotland on Monday so although Monday in many places will be the peak of this heat wave. It's not going to be heat wave everywhere and in fact you can see outbreaks of rain there courtesy of this weather front and a lot more cloud towards the far northwest of the UK whilst many other places see those temperatures soaring into the low possibly mid 30s. Tuesday we're watching this weather front closely because it is going to eventually cross the country and bring this cooler air in but some uncertainties on the timing of that and I'm going to go into that in just a moment. But it's not just about the daytime temperatures, the overnight temperatures will be exceptional as well. This shows a four day outlook in overnight temperatures. So the minimum temperatures this morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning, they just keep on climbing. By Monday, low 20s in places, that's the lowest temperature overnight. And in fact, put a bit more detail on that, mid to high teens widely across the UK from, say, central Scotland southwards, Northern Ireland as well, mid to high 20s, uncomfortable for sleeping, a little bit more comfortable there where we've got that more changeable weather into the northwest of Scotland. But Tuesday morning, 23 Celsius, we start the day with in London there. So really quite muggy and uncomfortable for sleeping. Of course, the overnight temperatures combined with the daytime temperatures, the duration of this spell as well, is something that the UK Health Security Agency take into account when they issue heat health alerts. These are heat health alerts that aren't issued by the Met Office, but they're issued with Met Office forecasts and advice in mind. And they are, the purpose of them is to uh, alert health professionals and those vulnerable to these kinds of temperatures that uh, you know, there's, there's some quite concerning weather on the way uh, because of course many of us like high temperatures uh, many people actively seek out high temperatures and go on holiday each year but our our, you know the UK is not set up to cope with these kinds of temperatures really and, and a lot of people struggle and certainly it is looking exceptional when we consider maximum temperatures over the next few days so Friday afternoon it's Still a pretty warm one out there. It's, it's breezy, but the breeze is bringing increased humidity across the country, so mid to high 20s for, say, the Midlands into eastern England, a little bit fresher there towards the west and the north, low 20s. Now into Saturday, yeah, it's going to be a grey and in places damp start, particularly through central and western parts of the country. We might keep some mist and low cloud hugging some of these western coasts through the day. 
So if you're heading to the beach, for example, in parts of Cornwall, it could stay fairly misty through the day, but that's just a, a really because of such high humidity crossing the country by then on this southwest CFO. And it is going to be very windy there in the north and northwest of Scotland. But that higher humidity will allow, once the sun comes out, temperatures to reach widely the high 20s, perhaps 30 Celsius there for London and East Anglia. Sunday, that higher pressure builds much more widely, so fairly widespread sunny skies by this stage. And as a result, temperatures still managing to climb to the mid to high 20s widely, but the possibility of 31 Celsius. But Monday, and bear in mind these are the most likely temperatures that I've put on the map here, we're looking at Scotland, Northern Ireland, a pleasantly warm day away from the breezy, wetter weather in the far northwest, low to mid 20s, the possibility of uh, sort of mid to high 20s for eastern parts of Scotland into northeast England, but the heat is really focused across this central and southern swathe of England and Wales. Talking about the high 20s for parts of Wales, perhaps into 30 Celsius, 31 Celsius in some spots towards the southeast. Uh, southwest England, mid to high 20s, but temperatures peaking from the Midlands down towards London and East Anglia. Most likely maximum temperature 34 Celsius. And a similar most likely maximum on Tuesday, but here we've got a little bit more uncertainty because of the timing of cooler air arriving from the west competing with the potential for even hotter air to move up from the south. So there are two competing influences on Tuesday. And there's always a bit of leeway when we're talking about temperatures a few days ahead. So I'm going to show you some um, more technical diagrams now that will help to explain that because of course we don't just look at one computer model simulation, we run it lots of times because of chaos theory and that allows us to get a grasp of the kinds of probabilities and the range of potential temperatures. And this graphic here shows the probability of temperatures exceeding 30 Celsius, so it looks at all the different computer simulations from the Met Office model. Here's the UK, it might be a bit faint on your screens, but there's Scotland, there's Northern Ireland, here's England and Wales, so it really shows that no, not going to see 30 Celsius for Scotland, Northern Ireland, probably not for much of Northwest England and West Wales, but there is that increased chance across East Wales into central, southern and eastern parts of England. So that's the probability of 30 Celsius, but another thing that we can do when we look at all these different computer model simulations is come up with something called percentiles. So it looks at the 50th percentile would be the middle value for all the different computer model simulations. The 90th percentile would be the top 10%, what the warmest 10% of the models are showing. And what we've got here is Monday's temperatures at, uh, in the afternoon, the highest temperature through Monday. The 70th percentile, which according to Deputy Chief who's on duty today, has been the most reliable then we'd be looking at temperatures over the past month or so, so the 70th percentile. And what that's suggesting is 34 to 35 Celsius between, say, parts of East Wales into the Midlands, London, Cambridgeshire, Northamptonshire, that kind of region, 34 to 35 Celsius. That's the 70th percentile, so that's a reasonably good guide. We've got uh, high 20s across the rest of Wales into northern England and southwest England as well. 26.5 there for the northeast of Scotland. But then, this is the 90th percentile, same time of day. This just shows what's possible, the top 10% highest numbers, and it's giving 36 degrees in a similar swathe from the Midlands. So not much of a difference, a degree or so, but of course there is a big difference really when we consider the UK climate between 34, 35 and 36, and it's the last day of June. So. What we can do with this information is we can say the most likely temperature is 34 Celsius, but there's a 40% chance of 35 Celsius, and there's a 20% chance that the June record will be broken, and that currently stands at 35.6 Celsius, set back in 1976, so 20% chance of that, and there's a 10% chance the temperature will go higher than 36 Celsius. So looking at all this information, we can get an idea of the probabilities and the probabilities are even more important when we're looking at Tuesday because of the timing of the weather front in from the west. So that's bringing cooler air in from the west, additional cloud. But it's also perhaps backing the airflow so that we get even higher temperatures arrive ahead of the weather front. And whether that happens overnight or whether it happens during the peak 
of the heat during Tuesday is uncertain. So there's a greater difference between the 70th percentile and the 90th percentile on Tuesday afternoon. 70th percentile still giving temperatures into the low 30s across East Anglia and the southeast. You can see the cooler air coming into the west though, that big contrast. But the 90th percentile gives higher temperatures compared with Monday, 36 degrees again, perhaps a little bit more. So a little bit to play for on Tuesday as the whole system starts to change. The jet stream dips there to the south. Potential for hotter air be drawn northwards, but cooler air eventually arrives. And a bit more confidence, I sus suspect, about the temperatures as we get into Wednesday, because it looks likely either way that the cooler air will be arriving. Still the mid-20s there in the southeast, and plenty of fine weather for the second half of next week, but with, I suspect, a more comfortable feel to things.